Leaking with exercise is so common, and one of the big pieces that often gets blamed for this is our pelvic floor. But your pelvic floor works on a larger team, so our breathing mechanics and our hip muscles need to be working well in order for our pelvic floor to work well so that we don't leak while we exercise. So in today's exercises here on the mat, I'm gonna be helping you to better understand how to breathe, how to strengthen your hips, and therefore how to sequence that pelvic floor better. You're gonna want a resistance band and a ball for this series here. If you don't have a ball or resistance band, you can still follow along. You can sub the ball in for a pillow or a yoga block as an example. The band here, I'm going to go ahead and wrap around the base of my rib cage to help bring some awareness to how I'm breathing because we want to be breathing through our diaphragm, which is that main breathing muscle at the base of our rib cage, instead of lifting up our ribs or breathing a lot just through the front of our body. We need to be breathing into the back of our rib cage to help that pelvic floor be able to respond better while we move. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on my back here. I'm gonna place the ball between my knees. I'm gonna begin here, starting with our breathing and also helping to connect with our inner thighs to improve this connection. So from here, you're gonna take a deep breath in and expand into that band if you're wearing one. And really feel your whole torso fill with air. As you exhale, you're gonna press your knees into the ball and exhale, wrapping your two front hip bones, and then feel the rest of your abdominals connect all the way back up as you close. Again, inhale to expand, exhale to zip from bottom to up. As you keep breathing in this way, I'm gonna point out a few helpful tips. Number one, as you inhale, be thoughtful that you are keeping your spine long and connected. We wanna make sure that we are not rocking and rolling from our pelvis as we breathe. I find it super common for my patients that are having difficulty when they're first learning how to do this. As they exhale, they are often pulling their rib cage down or they're tucking their pelvis under instead of wrapping those lower abdominals first and then continuing the rest of that connection upward. Other piece you wanna be thoughtful of is really connecting your feet into the floor. So connect that big toe, pinky toe to heel, that tripod of your feet. I want you to anchor and root into the floor so that that's gonna give you a better connection around the ball to really help stabilize your pelvis. Once again, take a deep breath in, feel that expansion happen. Exhale to feel that wrap through the lower abdominals and upward. One more time, inhale, exhale, zipping upward. I find it super helpful to keep hands on that lower abdominal zone so you can really feel what's happening there. Notice that if you breathe and connect your upper abdominals first, instead of your lower abdominals, we're gonna get what we call this kind of ballooning out of those lower abdominals, which means that they're not connecting well, which means our pelvic floor is gonna get overloaded and cause leaking there. So really be thoughtful about how this lower abdominal team is connecting first and then upward instead of the top and then pushing downward. So we're gonna continue this practice now with a bridge. So engage your knees around that ball. We're still rooting into the tripods of our feet. We're gonna to inhale to expand, exhale, wrap those lower abdominals as you press up into a bridge. Hold here for a moment at the top and then inhale as you slowly control your body back down to the mat. Again, exhale to press up, maintaining that hug around the ball. Inhale to slowly lower down. Continue in this way as I point out a few helpful tips. As you exhale and wrap and press your body up, be thoughtful that you're not overarching through your back to come up, but instead really pressing through your hips. Be mindful that the ribs and the pelvis are staying connected instead of that arched position. Other important piece, as you press up, really root through that full tripod of your foot as you come up. That's gonna help improve that activation around your hip muscles and therefore provide more support and activation for your pelvic floor. Inhale as you fully lower down. One last time, inhale here, exhale to press all the way up. 
and then slowly lower down. Now we're gonna turn on our side for our side plank. Here, I like to keep the ball between my knees. I'm gonna come onto my forearm so my elbow is right underneath my shoulder. I'm still gonna focus on my breathing as I do this motion. So you're gonna inhale to prepare, exhale to hug the ball, and then press your hip up just a few inches off the mat. Inhale to slowly lower back down with control. Once again, we inhale to prepare, exhale, think about those two front hip bones wrapping towards each other and up towards your rib cage. As you lift, inhale to expand that breath all the way through your torso, and then exhale to lift back up again. Continue in this way as I point out a few things. First, be thoughtful that your hand and forearm are really grounding into the floor, as well as your bottom knee to create that press upward. Notice that once I'm here, I wanna be also thoughtful that my rib cage is not extending forward, but instead my ribs are staying connected with my pelvis. Lowering back down. One more time, exhale, press up. Be thoughtful that your shoulders also stay parallel to each other. It's super common for people to turn forward or to turn back, but instead we wanna keep our shoulders stacked. That's gonna help our hips stay stacked and you should really feel your core, your lower hip, and the obliques doing a lot of helpful work for you. Let's go ahead and turn around to face the other way. From here, you're gonna press that ball as you exhale, lifting up, holding there for a moment, and then slowly controlling the body back down. Exhale, thinking about those two front hip bones that hug around the ball, and then slowly lowering. Notice also that my side plank here, as I press up, I'm still maintaining some bend in the front of my hip. I'm doing this on purpose to really help my hip and my obliques actually have a little bit more activation and engagement instead of the tendency to extend through the back. So that's another helpful tip here of maintaining that bend at the hip to really work those obliques as well as my inner thighs and my pelvic floor well here. One more time, inhale to prepare, exhale to press, hold there for a moment and slowly lower down. Our last exercise is going to be a bear plank. I like to take the ball between my thighs I'm gonna come onto hands and knees here, tucking my toes under, creating a table with my body. Now, before you begin here, it's really important to find that nice long spine position. If we're really arched or rounded, that's not gonna help our whole core team connect well, which means that my pelvic floor is not going to be able to respond as well either. So find that nice long position, and then the goal is gonna to be to maintain that while we float our knees up off the floor. So you're gonna create about a 50% hug around the ball. You're gonna inhale, exhale to float up. Hold there for a moment and then inhale to set the knees down, working to keep that spine long throughout. Once again, we exhale, wrap the lower abdominals, lift, keeping that spine long and then slowly set it down. Keep moving in this way as I point out a few things. As you exhale and press, it's really common for people to start to round their spine. This means that we're using our upper abdominals first instead of the lower, so find that long position. If it's helpful, you can even place a yoga block on your low back to give you feedback in this way. Also, as we press up, really connect through your whole hand, especially the thumb and index finger, as well as the big toes. This really helps you root through the ground to create that supported lift. One more time, inhaling here, exhale to press, holding here, and then slowly lowering down. So as you practice with these exercises, really pay attention to your breath. How you're connecting from the lower to upper is really the foundation of these exercises and what helps us to be able to create good support through our torso while we're moving so that we don't overload our pelvic floor, thus creating leaking. So I hope you guys found this exercise series to be helpful. Feel free to drop your questions in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.